Hi, this video covers questions 6 to 9 on paper 2 of the AQA November 2013 foundation exam paper. For more questions on this exam paper, click the link here or check in the video description. Question 6. Here are some share prices. All prices are in pence per share. And we need to work out the cost of 25 Newton shares. And we need to give our answer in pounds. So here are the Newton shares. They cost 3,451 pence each. So to buy 25 shares, we need to do 25 times 3,451. And that gives us 82,824. But remember, at the moment, this is in pence. So we need to turn it into pounds. Remembering there's 100 pence in each pound, we need to divide by 100. We don't really need to use our calculator for this. All we need to do is shift everything two places to the right to make it smaller. So we would get 828 pounds and 24 pence. Another way of thinking about it is to move the decimal point twice to here. Part B says George has £5,000 to buy some Petro shares. Work out the largest number of shares that he could buy. We need to be careful again here because this amount is in pounds and the Petro shares are in pence. So what I'm going to do is turn 415 pence into pounds. To do that, I divide by 100. That gives me £4.15. Now what I need to do is find out how many times does 4.15 go into 5,000, and that will tell me how many shares I can afford. And goes into implies that I'm dividing, so I need to do 5,000 divided by 4.15. On my calculator I've got a fraction up here, if you get that don't forget you can either press the SD button, yours might be labelled change if you've got a different kind of scientific calculator. And that gives me this number here. But George must buy a whole number of shares, so he can't buy 1,205 because he can't afford it, so he would have to buy 1,204. And then he'd just have a little bit of money left over. Question 7. Here is some information about temperatures in Italy in January. And that's in the table here. 7 part A says which part of Italy is the coldest in January? Well, let's look at the minimum temperature then for each place. Northern Italy is minus 4, central Italy is 5, and southern Italy is 10. So the coldest temperature anywhere in the table is minus 4. Notice also that the maximum temperature in each of the three places is also the lowest in northern Italy as well. So the part of Italy coldest in January is Northern Italy. Part B says which part of Italy has the smallest range in temperature in July? You must show your working. Well the range is defined to be the largest take the smallest. So the range in temperature here is from minus 4 all the way up to 5. Imagine if you've got a number line that started at negative 4 over here and you wanted to get all the way up to 5. You may do that by adding 4 to get you to 0 and then adding 5 to get you up to 5. So in total you've gone up 9, so the range for this one is 9. Central Italy from 5 to 13, that's got a range of 8. You could also think of this as 13 subtract 5. And in Southern Italy it goes from 10 to 16, that's a range of 6. So it's Southern Italy that's got the smallest range. Part C says the temperatures in a town in Italy on five days in January are 10, 5, 11, 7 and 12 degrees C. Work out the mean temperature. To work out the mean, what we do is add our numbers together and then divide by how many there are. In this case there are five temperatures, so we need to do 10, plus 5, plus 11, plus 7, plus 12. And then we're going to divide that whole answer by 5. Now remember, you could use your calculator if you need to here. I don't think we're going to need to. 10 out of 5 is 15. 
add 11 is 26, add 7 is 33, add 12 is 45. And then if you divide all of that, 45 by 9, you get 9. So the mean temperature is 9 degrees C. In part D, it says, which part of Italy do you think the town in part C is in? Give a reason for your answer. Well, let's borrow the temperatures from part C. We've got 10, 5, 11, 7, 12. Well, from our town in part C, the smallest temperature is 5, and the largest temperature is 12, and we need to compare that to what we've got here. Well, the minimum temperature that's closest to 5 in this table would be this one, and the maximum temperature that's closest to 12 would be that one. Also, remember, we figured out the mean temperature to be 9 degrees C. And 9 degrees C isn't in between the temperatures for northern Italy, and it's not in between the temperatures for southern Italy. But it is in between 5 and 13. So I think the most sensible answer is central Italy. Now, there are several things that you could put for the answer here. I think the most sensible is that all of these temperatures are between 5 and 13. Question 8, part A. Plot the points A, which is 4, 3, and B, which is 1, minus 5, on the grid. Remember, the first number is telling us how far across to go. The second number is telling us how far up or down to go. So this is saying 4 to the right and 3 up. So we start in the middle at 0. We go 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 3 up, 1, 2, 3, and we put a cross here. It makes sense to label that A because we're putting two points on, so we know which one's which. And we've got B, which is 1, negative 5. That's going to be 1 to the right and down by 5. So starting from the middle again, we go 1 to the right and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Point B is going to be down here. In part B, it says point C has the same X coordinate as B and the same Y coordinate as A. Plot the point C on the grid. Let's just label up what these points were. This one was 4, 3. And this one was 1, minus 5. So the x coordinate is the first number. So if we look at coordinate b, that's telling us that point c has the same x coordinate. So it's got 1 for its x coordinate. So c is going to be 1, comma, something. It's also got the same y coordinate as a. So the y coordinate is the second number of the pair. And that, in this case, is going to be 3. So we're going to plot the point 1, comma, 3. So we go across to 1 and up to 3, and that's going to be there. In part C, it says point D has the same x coordinate as the y coordinate of B. So let's break that statement down a little bit. We're trying to find the x coordinate for D. So that's the first number. And it says that number is the same as the y coordinate of B. So if we look at B, the y coordinate of B is negative 5. So we'll write that down. For the next part, point D has the same y coordinate, so that's the second number we're thinking about now, as the x coordinate of A. So looking at A, the x coordinate in this case is the 4, so we're going to put a 4 for our y coordinate. So starting at the middle, we go left 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So D is up here. Question 9. 20 students chose a sport. In part A, it says how many boys chose tennis? So as we go through, we'll put a tick next to the ones we want. So boy choosing tennis there. We've got another boy choosing tennis here. Another one here. And that's it. So how many boys chose tennis? The answer is three. Always remember, when you're doing a question like this, it's quite easy to actually do the question, but there's a lot of chances to make a mistake with this much data. So always go through and check your answer and make sure that you've not made any mistakes. Part B says put the information into a two-way table. Remember to complete the totals. The way this table works is where the columns and rows intersect, that's where you write the value for each bit. So for example, if I wanted the girls that played football, I'd follow the girls' row 
and see where it intersects with the football column and I would write that in this box here. So let's start with boys playing tennis because in part A we said that three boys were playing tennis so we know the answer to that and we can just write that bit in. Let's do boys playing basketball next. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to tick all the boys doing basketball. Got one here, two, three. If you're doing this in your exam, it's a good idea to tick these using pencil and then each time you can rub it out to do the next choice. So I've got three boys playing basketball. Next up, we'll do boys playing football. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Next up, we'll do girls playing tennis. One, two, three, four, five. Now we'll do girls playing basketball. One, two. And finally, we'll do girls playing football. That's two. So we know that 20 students chose a sport. So first of all, let's check we've actually got 20 here. Five out of five is 10. 3 out of 3 is 6, that's 16, and 2 out of 2 is 4, that gives us 20 altogether. So, so that's a check. It won't tell us if we've done it right, but it will tell us definitely if we've done it wrong. The question also says remember to complete the totals. So to fill in this total box here, all I do is add everything in this row. So how many boys have I got? 3 out of 3 is 6, add 5, that's 11. How many girls have I got? 5, add 2, add 2 is 9. And you should notice that 11 add 9 makes 20 here. How many people play tennis? 3 out of 5 is 8. How many played basketball? 3 out of 2 is 5. And how many played football? 5 out of 2 is 7. And 8 plus 5 plus 7 gives us 20.